Well, hello everyone, this is Pastor Mark, and you're joining me on Friday, September 4th, 2020, as we finish up the letter to Timothy, 2 Timothy chapter 4 today. Let's pray. Father, be with us, guide us, direct us, love on us, and keep us. Lord, show us your truth today. As we end up this week, give us a nugget that we can take into the weekend and ultimately into the rest of our lives. Truth, understanding, be our mentor today. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Again, we're ending up 2 Timothy with 2 Timothy chapter 4 today. We're going to jump into Titus next week, but let's finish up Timothy. Chapter 4, in the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who will judge the living and the dead, and in view of his appearing and his kingdom, I give you this charge. Preach the word and be prepared in season and out of season. Correct, rebuke, and encourage with great patience and careful instruction. For the time will come when people will not put up with sound doctrine. Instead, to suit their own desires, they will gather around them a great number of teachers to say what their itching ears want to hear. They will turn their ears away from the truth and turn aside to myths. But you, keep your head in all situations, endure hardship, do the work of an evangelist, discharge all the duties of your ministry. For I am already being poured out like a drink offering, and the time of my departure is near. I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, I have kept the faith. Now there is in store for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day, and not only me, but also to all who have longed for his appearing. Do your best to come to me quickly, for Demas, because he loved this world, has deserted me and has gone to Thessalonica. Crescens has gone to Galatia and Titus to Dalmatia. Only Luke is with me. Get Mark and bring him with you because he is helpful to me in my ministry. I sent Tychicus to Ephesus. When you come, bring the cloak that I left with Carpus and Troas, and my scrolls, especially the parchments. Alexander the metal worker did me a great deal of harm. The Lord will repay him for what he has done. You too should be on your guard against him, because he strongly opposed our message. At my first defense, no one came to my support. But everyone deserted me. May it not be held against them. But the Lord stood at my side and gave me strength, so that through me the message might be fully proclaimed and all the Gentiles, Gentiles might hear it. And I was delivered from the lion's mouth. The Lord will rescue me from every evil attack and will bring me safely to his heavenly kingdom. To him be glory forever and ever. Amen. Greet Priscilla and Aquila, the household of Onesiphorus. Erastus stayed in Corinth, and I left Trophimus sick in Miletus. Do your best to get here before winter. Eubulus greets you, and so, and so do Pudens, Linus, Claudia, and all the brothers and sisters. The Lord be with your spirit. Grace be with you all. Folks, it's is a, a beautiful, beautiful letter, and it ends so absolutely beautiful. And, and Paul doesn't pull any punches in this chapter, does he? he? He names people, good and bad. And I think this is an object lesson for us. This is not really one of the things I was planning on saying, but uh, I'll say it. This is an object lesson, lesson for us. That sometimes we name sin. Sometimes we put a name to sin, especially when we're talking with our close ministry partners, especially when we're talking with our accountability partners, our mentors, you know, it, we should be honest and open. And if somebody has wronged us, we can talk about that. It's not wrong to talk about it. Notice Paul doesn't trash anybody here. In fact, he says, don't hold it against them. But he's honest with what happened, the abandonment he felt, maybe the sin that was committed against him. We need to be that way as well. But the, the main points that I want to make <clears throat> What I mean by that, we need to have people that we can trust to be open and honest with and name those who have hurt us, right? Okay. But the main points I wanted to make today uh, in chapter 4 is, uh, look at verse 3. For the, time is, for the time will come, Paul says, when people will not put up with sound doctrine. Instead, to suit their own desires, they will gather around them 
a great number of teachers to say what their itching ears want to hear. They will turn their ears away from truth and turn aside to myths. And we see that happening in the church today. I talked about this earlier this week, I believe, um, that we see that happening in our church today, don't we? People who are not, false teachers who are not preaching truth, who are not preaching the true gospel, who are not preaching what God has called those of us who are teachers and preachers and mentors to teach, but they're teaching myths. They're teaching falsity. They're teaching things in many cases that are antithetical to the word of God. Remember what we read about yesterday. Be careful of those people, right, that are teaching false doctrine and who are mean-spirited and who are lovers of money. Remember, Paul says, have nothing to do with them. We learned that uh, yesterday. I think it was yesterday. And here, what he says is he said there's going to come, he's kind of reiterating that point, what's going to come a day when people aren't going to to stand for sound doctrine and truth. They're going to turn away to myths and falsehoods. What does he say? But you, I'm reading in verse 5, but you keep your head in all situations. Endure hardship, do the work of an evangelist, discharge all the duties of your ministry. In other words, stay the course. We talked about that, didn't we, earlier this week. Stay the course. Don't be dissuaded. Don't be discouraged. Don't be tempted to go another way. When you see the world and the rest of the church or other portions of the church, I should say, crumbling around you, when you see false doctrine, when you see false teachers, when you see lovers of money, when you see conceitedness and greed around you, don't be discouraged. Stay the course. Stay on task, we learned, right? Stay on task. And that's encouragement for you and me today too. No matter what's happening in the world around us, there's a lot of negative things happening in the world around us right now. Stay the course. Use your spiritual gifts. Teach and serve and love, just like God's uh, directed us to do, commanded us to do, and encourages us to do. Teach, serve, love, no matter what's going on around you. Stay the course in your ministry. So that's the first thing. The other thing is in verse 7. And Paul says, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. You know, here's Paul at the end of his life. He's saying, I'm not going to be around much longer. God's going to take me, uh, take me on to the heavenly realms. But he has the confidence to say, I fought the good fight. I've finished the race and I've kept the faith. Folks, when I read, when I read that, when I've read it in the past, when I read it today, it reminds me that that's what I want to say at the end of my life. Whether I'm lying on a, a bed waiting for my demise or um, or whatever, or I'm just growing old and I know that my time is near. I want to be able to say, you know what? I fought the good fight. I've finished the race and I've kept the faith. And the way we do that, right, is we, we maintain our relationship with God. We teach, serve, love. We triangle faith it, right? We stay in God's word. We pray. We fellowship. We stay engaged in the, in the body of Christ. So folks, um, you know, those are the two main points that I, I wanted to look at today. But what a beautiful, beautiful ending to this, uh, to this letter and to the correspondence that we see with Timothy. Paul says, you know what, man? It's going to get hard, but just stay the course. Don't be discouraged. And when you get to the end of your life, be able to say, I fought the good fight. I've finished the race. I've kept the faith. Let's pray. Father, I don't know where everybody is today, but I just pray that this would be convicting to hearts and minds today. People would see through the glass darkly into their hearts, their souls, their inner beings to see where they're failing, maybe where they need to make some corrections, change course a little bit, to become more like you, to teach, to serve, to love, to read scripture and devote their lives to your word more, to pray with deeper meaning and conviction, to fellowship with others in the church in meaningful ways, accountable ways, convicting ways, mentoring ways. Don't let us miss the boat on this. Show us where we're going wrong. Help us to correct our courses so that we can say, I fought the good fight, I finished the race, I kept the faith. Be with us, Lord, this weekend. Pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, like I said, we'll be in Titus on Monday.
I'll see you then.